our future to witness a medical revolution. We're on the cusp of unleashing long-hidden secrets buried deep in our DNA. This is the ultimate genetic crystal ball. DNA sequencing, it's a profound game changer. Visionary technology now promises to end deadly diseases and gives us the key to immortality itself. We knew that there was a way to intervene with aging at the genetic level. DNA can absolutely help feed and heal this world across the board. Spectacular new discoveries are revealing the true power of our genes. This is DNA, the next wave. Scientists are using DNA to map out a new genetic world. In this scientific field of dreams, Dr. Cynthia Kenyon is attempting to bring what once was science fiction into reality. The Fountain of Youth. Different species age at really different rates. And different species are different because they have different genes. So there's something in the genes that can affect the rate of aging. And what is it? In her labs at the University of California, she's using genetic technology to change the very course of human evolution. So it seemed to me that it was possible that there was something in us like a little dial. You turn it up and you age fast. Turn it down and you age more slowly. Maybe even further down you age like a turtle, which is very, very slowly. This revolution is not just limited to a secret group of elite academics. Now it's happening in the world of private enterprise, propelling this technology directly onto the mass market for everyone to access. Every health issue we're destined to encounter can be detected and cured. What we really want to do is make sequencing affordable and commonplace so that we can use this to inform and extend everybody's life. Scientists in the private sector are now using this new era of genetic wisdom to better understand our DNA. Your predisposition to, to certain diseases are determined by your DNA. It doesn't necessarily mean fate, um, but it can set the boundaries of what your potential is. Riding on the wave of a scientific revolution, both the academic world and commercial labs agree on one critical point. We are now masters of our own genetic destiny. Encinitas, California. Paramedics rush to the Beery household. Alexis is frantically gasping for air. We went running down the hallway and her face had started to turn somewhat bluish in color. We knew that we were going to have to fight for her life. Joe and Retta Beery are parents to twins who both suffer from a devastating medical condition they've had since birth. For over a decade, doctors are unable to understand the cause of their crippling mystery illness. We had no idea what was going on. It was a life or death situation. Her arms would be stuck, uh, glued to her chest, her eyes would roll to the back of her head. Noah threw up every day of his life, and it was, it was very difficult for us as a family. Unknown to the family, Alexis and Noah share a rare and dangerous condition locked inside their genes. With health care running into millions of dollars and no successful diagnosis from the doctors, the Beery family are running out of options. In addition to the elderly, more possible than her. Can the larger scientific community offer Alexis and Noah new hope?
pioneering technology is radically transforming health care and offers help to those suffering from mystery illnesses around the world. It's called DNA sequencing. DNA sequencing is basically the blueprint of what makes you, you. It's the roadmap of your genetic code. Amanda Clardy is part of a new generation, bringing DNA out of the science labs and directly into our lives. Your DNA code can tell us whether you're predisposed to common diseases, and if those diseases ever manifest themselves, we can know why. By taking a genetic sample, scientists can read or sequence our personal genetic code. DNA is the key software in our body that tells us how to grow and function. All of your genetic material is stored in your DNA, and you have DNA in nearly every cell of your body. If I were to have a lot of DNA in a test tube, and I was to stick a glass rod into that test tube and pull it up, it would look like a really long, clear string. Through deconstructing the complex strings of DNA codes, we can spot corrupted or mutated chemical letters. These mutations are the cause of many health problems we encounter in the future. Sequencing allows us to predict impending diseases and empowers individuals to adopt profound life changes. You might actually choose to live your life differently, whether it's how you eat or the preventative care you seek. Driving this new marvel of technology is the rapidly decreasing price of sequencing. Academic and commercial groups are joining forces to create an affordable way to screen our entire genetic code. When we sequenced the first human genome, it took 10 years and cost nearly $3.8 billion. Now, you'll be able to sequence a human genome in one day for about $1,000. That difference is what's going to get this type of technology into every doctor's lab in the future. A global network of people sharing genetic information has started to alter the face of medical research. It's an intriguing concept that's gathering momentum. Knowing your DNA code and having everybody's DNA code um, in a database is actually what can really help us. Because at this point in time, there's still so much research that needs to get done. But it could start a revolution where we're all very comfortable sharing it in an anonymous way. Sequencing could potentially cure billions of people around the world. For Alexis and Noah, this technology offers the second chance at life that the family has been longing for. When we did get our DNA sequenced, it was painless. The blood just went through the machine and it was just sequencing it uh, strand by strand. After analyzing Alexis and Noah's DNA data, researchers discover a shocking revelation. They had found a genetic mutation in myself, a genetic mutation in Joe. Together, Noah and Alexis got both of these mutations in one gene. Dopamine and serotonin, the essential chemicals that manage our brain and central nervous systems, are at dangerously low levels in the twins. This life-saving diagnosis enables the doctors to find a cure. The twins begin taking medication and never look back. I could mentally and physically like feel a change happening. Just being able to have the freedom to run, it was just an amazing feeling. I could never probably jump. I can. I would probably be in a wheelchair. I can do many things. To watch Alexis and Noah be able to play basketball, to be able to run, to be able to even go to dinner. We are so grateful and we don't take anything for granted. A 
Alexis and Noah are one of the first in the world to be saved by DNA sequencing. But this cure is not without its cost. When I think about all the evasive tests, all the dollars, all the time that was spent and all the pain that we went through where DNA sequencing was a simple blood test and then some data and analytics. In the future, our health problems could be mapped out at birth. But is every one of us truly prepared to predict our own future? We're only um, scratching the surface of all the knowledge that we're going to obtain by studying the human genome. As we consider the implications of this new wave of DNA technology, science is tempting us with the promise of another medical breakthrough. Superhuman life. A race to a new genetic frontier has started. Scientists are finding innovative approaches to gene expression profiling. Gene expression is, in science is how a gene functions. When you activate a gene, it will make a protein. Gene expression is related to whether that particular gene is activated or inactivated, if you will, to make less protein. Academic institutions and privately funded labs are harnessing the huge potential of this science. The human genome is the bulk of life. And we have finally been able to understand what is written in this book of life. And these breakthroughs are powering us towards a once impossible goal, identifying the sources of aging. What we are trying to see now is whether we can actually slow down the aging process in such a way so that these age-related diseases don't happen early on. We are trying to delay the onset of these diseases as much as possible. Meet Dr. Joseph Chang. As a chief scientist of a privately funded lab, he's dedicated his life to nutritional intervention for the war on aging. I experienced in my lifetime uh, the death of my father about three years ago. He never had a good quality of life for ten years before his death. And I began to wonder, can a person maintain an optimal quality of life throughout his or her lifespan? In these commercial labs, Dr. Chang is searching for a way his company can restore our bodies to a more youthful setting. Through our scientific studies and to our research, we are beginning to understand there are certain groups of genes that are very important in aging. Instead of just talking about groups of genes, we thought by coining a term such as youth gene clusters, it would give a better definition of what we're trying to do in our research. Within the clusters, he is looking for genes that regulate aging. If you somehow change the gene expression profile of youth gene clusters, it has either a positive or a negative impact on biological aging. He becomes interested in youth gene clusters related to mitochondria, tiny structures in our cells. These are miniature motors that fuel our bodies, maintaining our energy levels from cradle to grave. Yeah, the mitochondria, like the battery, does drain over time. If we don't recharge the, the mitochondria battery, we won't have the energy uh, needed to run the cell. And if the mitochondria doesn't function optimally, then these early signs of aging begin to appear. Advancements in science enable Dr. Chang to probe at DNA's frontier. He's trying to restore mitochondrial function using gene expression technology. So when we talk about resetting, we're not talking about structurally changing these genes. We are really resetting the activity or the gene expression profile of age-related genes. 
we are beginning to understand there is a certain gene expression profile that exists when you were in a very youthful state. But as you age over time, that gene expression profile changes. We want to make sure that a gene expression profile stays as close as possible to what you had when you were a 20-year-old. On the other side of the world, partnering with Dr. Chang at a sister lab is Dr. Josh Zhu. He's using his knowledge of the natural world to battle aging with the most unusual of ingredients. The scientist believes that he is getting close to discovering the key to resetting mitochondrial gene expression with the help of a fungus called Cordyceps sinensis. Cordyceps sinensis is a fungal product, a natural product. It's just similar to any kind of a mushroom. But this is no ordinary fungus. In the wild, it grows on the heads of live caterpillars from a range of remote mountains in Tibet. After years of correctly formulating the right blend through a fermentation process, Dr. Su is ready to take Cordyceps sinensis out of the lab and begin observational studies to discover its true power. His studies have found that after taking Cordyceps sinensis, their exercise performance capability improved. Cordyceps sinensis shortened recovery period, and improved cardiovascular function. Cordyceps sinensis drastically heightens endurance and energy metabolism and fights fatigue. The results indicate that Cordyceps sinensis could potentially counteract the strains of daily life that lead to aging. We can see a Cordyceps sinensis not really just an extended lifespan, but a healthy lifespan. We proved Cordyceps sinensis is really anti-aging herb. Dr. Zhu's Cordyceps sinensis research is added to other blended ingredients to create Dr. Chang's anti-aging compound. This is the first time ever where some of these natural ingredients by using modern scientific methods to demonstrate that it can actually extend lifespan. Scientific experiments at academic and commercial labs show that our genes do not control our fate. Our research is beginning to reveal the reality that the aging process is most likely a symphony that is being played in the body. And in order to play that symphony extremely well, you need an orchestra of genes being somewhat uh, cooperating with each other to make sure that the aging symphony doesn't get out of tune. Gene expression technology is revealing a path to healthier lives for all of us. But there is a catch. With the world swelling to over 7 billion people and many developing severe conditions in their later years, two experts are turning to mankind's closest relatives. And helping them is a tiny technological invention. In the next few decades, the world's aging population will increase like never before. It's a high-risk game with everything to play for. Can the aging process be improved? In private research labs, scientists are now working at the frontier of DNA age research. Dr. Richard Weindruck and Dr. Thomas Prola are using advances in gene expression profiling to discover how nutrients affect aging at a genetic level. There is not a lot of difference from the control. So I would be surprised if there is much of an aging. Dietary restriction has been demonstrated to produce a change in gene expression in a variety of species. When food is scarce, our bodies concentrate on conservation and become more efficient. Dr. Weindruck believes that the key to aging well lies directly in what we eat. Caloric restriction 
seems to be the most potent dietary intervention to slow not only aging, but really in the quality of life. Dr. Weindruck wants to conduct a long-term study on the effects of caloric restriction on gene expression in humans. But time's not on his side. This experiment would literally take a lifetime. His next best option is our cousin species with whom we share a similar genetic makeup. Monkeys. In 1989, 76 healthy rhesus monkeys were divided into two groups. One group was allowed to eat freely, while the other was put on a ration diet. The results of his research have been published in prestigious scientific journals. We gradually restricted the ones assigned to the caloric restriction group by 10% of the caloric intake for the first month, another 10% for the second month, and the third month began uh, the final level of a 30% lowering of calorie intake. This scientific research was without guarantee of any significant results. But Dr. Weindruck persisted. Rhesus monkeys can live up to 40 years. That's a long, long time to wait to get a result for an experiment. But Dr. Weindruck and his team were determined to better understand the benefits of caloric restriction. Over the years, they monitored the monkeys and reviewed changes in health and signs of aging. After two decades of research, the results are stunning. The diet-controlled monkeys are healthier and living up to 20% longer. Results show that the caloric restricted monkeys have an astonishing threefold decrease in age related diseases. It's through gene expression profiling that scientists can determine how caloric restriction has improved the primate's aging. The effects of caloric restriction are clearly dramatic. Finding that these effects occur in primates and therefore most likely also occur in humans is really a major breakthrough. But there is a big obstacle. Because the research on monkeys takes so long, Dr. Prola and Dr. Weindruck decide to simultaneously work on gene expression in mice. This allows them to conduct more studies in a relatively shorter period of time. Dedicating decades of research work to a single experiment has been daunting. But now, an even bigger challenge lies before them. When you think about the fact that we use a large number of animals, these numbers quickly add up to hundreds of millions of data points. The results are gathered together to create one of the world's largest aging and caloric restriction gene expression databases. With millions of genetic data points, a solution to accessing all this information is found in a single powerful database that employs cutting-edge gene chip technology. A powerful new tool in gene expression profiling. Each chip contains all 20,000 plus genes in the mouse genome. This database allows scientists to interpret their findings on a global scale. The gene chip technology is basically a way to monitor the expression of thousands of genes at once. This was the first study to use gene chips to study aging. Uh, this new technology provided a global view of gene expression activity. I think without the existence or the development of gene chip technology, we will not have tools to even begin to understand what all the genes do inside our body. They're searching for nutrients that imitate the positive effects of caloric restriction, but without restricting calories. One compound that's proving to be successful in trials is a substance found in red wine, known as resveratrol. What we're trying to do at LifeGen is to identify nutrients that have this ability 
of caloric restriction to change the activity of genes in a way that will slow down the aging process. So individual nutrients may have on their own mild effects, but when combined we hope to find mixtures of nutrients that are going to have a much stronger effect. I like to think that one day all of us can actually die healthy. In addition to companies using DNA gene expression profiling to solve nutritional problems, scientists are now waging a fierce genetic war on a new frontier. In the future, with the help of DNA technology, we can free the innocent and punish the guilty. And for one man trapped behind bars, genetic tools might just give him a second chance at life. He was claiming that there was DNA evidence. I have to fight my way out of here. Areas of our DNA. We are opening up new frontiers for healthier and longer lives. And the next wave of advances in gene technology is helping us investigate criminal activity on a deep genetic level. DNA is probably the single greatest advancement in forensic science over the last 20 years. Testing DNA evidence has become supremely important, especially when there are men who may be factually innocent and sitting on death row right now. California, 1986. A woman is seriously assaulted and robbed at gunpoint. A man is charged, found guilty, and sentenced to 47 years in one of America's most dangerous jails. But there is a twist to this heinous crime. The man convicted is called Herman Atkins. And Herman is innocent. Then I think about what my father used to always say. You know, he used to always tell us, America has the best justice system in the whole wide world. I threw that notion out immediately. Robbed of his freedom and torn away from his family, Herman goes into a downward spiral. Yeah, I became very hostile and bitter. I had determined from that point on, okay, I have to fight my way out of here. Herman hears about a legal group. They're called the Innocence Project. The Innocence Project frees the wrongfully convicted. Uh, we work on cases through um, investigation and through testing of old evidence to prove that someone did not commit a crime. Herman sends them a letter. This might be the last chance to clear his name. In his case, he was claiming that there was DNA evidence that could exonerate him. And there, the task was to find the evidence, test it, and see if it matched him or not. The Innocence Project starts to look at the evidence. But it's a long, nerve-wracking wait for Herman. I didn't want to get my hopes up high because I understood that evidence is easily destroyed. For many years, Herman waits, and then, finally, a discovery. The victims close. The human DNA sample is now a decade old. Will it have survived? The key to Herman's fight is in the power of DNA testing. DNA definitely makes our world safer. Over the last uh, decade, we've seen our case growth go up about 800 percent. So it's, the challenge has been responding to that tremendous pressure for additional testing. Today, there is a new approach to gathering genetic information. There's a genetic diagnostic kit called Global Filer. The new genetic technology is twice as fast as previous kits. And it can even sequence microscopic DNA samples that are decades old. Global Filer is really designed to capture the maximum amount of information from very challenging samples, even those that have been exposed to very harsh environmental conditions. Sunlight, bones that have been buried in the ground. So it's very important for the chemistry to be able to overcome any other environmental contaminants that might be present in the evidence. The DNA is collected, tested, and profiled. 
the results are all consistent. Herman is innocent. The outcome of Herman's case after the testing proved conclusively that he was not the perpetrator. His reaction was part shock, part unbelievable joy. I think it was something that he waited for for 12 long years. He was just so glad that DNA testing had progressed to the point where it could prove he was uh, wrongfully convicted. Herman is finally released and he starts to rebuild his shattered life one piece at a time. Currently I'm, uh, I'm a law school student at California Western School of Law. My uh, objective is clear. I want to get laws changed. I want to represent the very individuals that I know for a fact are, are in prison for crimes that they didn't commit. I will dedicate the rest of my life to fighting um, justice and fighting for those that can't afford justice. Genetic technology is a powerful tool for the ongoing fight against crime. And it will be more effective in the future. As the years go on, technology gets better and better. We can have samples that can be tested that couldn't be tested previously, and more accurately as well. DNA testing can show who conclusively committed the crime. Mapping out our genetic world is releasing a new wave of scientific breakthroughs. It's helping us learn about our shared genetic traits across the world. But this next wave of DNA knowledge is not without controversy. It was quite a shock. I felt like there was a piece of my history that I knew nothing about. We are finding ways to unlock the power of DNA for a better future. For one woman, genetic technology allows her to explore an uncharted territory, her past. But there may be a catch. In California, Jolie Pearl wants to start the very personal journey of tracing her family's forgotten heritage. I wanted to find out more about my mother's past. She had a difficult upbringing. Her own mother's mother died when she was young. Jolie searches into her family's past. Her research leads her to an online personal genetics company, promising to help her uncover more about her ancestry. This type of service also offers to track down distant relatives and is fast becoming a major force in social networking. You are connecting with others on the basis of genetic information. In fact, we help people connect with one another who share these genetic segments. This is crowd sharing for those with a common ancestry on a global scale. It's pretty simple. Order a kit, then they put saliva into this little tube, send it back to our lab, and then wait to hear from us. Everybody has a different set of secrets hidden in their DNA. Accessing genetic blueprints in this way has drawn both praise and concern for how our DNA information could be used in the future. When you do something new, there are often skeptics and, and critics, so we've been you know, cautious along the way because we know we're doing something so novel. You know, I do have concerns that DNA um, information could be used to exclude people from getting health coverage. You know, I think those are real concerns, but I think it's a choice. I want to know. Some people don't, and that's okay. You know, people can make their own choice about it. For Jolie, the curiosity to search deeper into her family's ancestry proves too strong to ignore. I decided to uh, begin exploring in more detail the area of the website. A little prompt came up and said, find your relative. And there was a little warning that came up too and it said, uh, be aware that the results of this query may be upsetting or surprising. What popped up was, um, a predicted match of a sibling. This revelation is equally shocking to Toronto native Neil Schwartzman. I got an email from somebody saying, I think you might be my brother. Jolie has uncovered a secret hidden deep in her past 
she has a brother who was given up for adoption by their mother when he was just 10 days old. So I, I felt like there was a piece of my history that I knew nothing about. And that was, that was surprising, a little upsetting at times. It's opened up a whole world for me, and it's very much helped me to understand my own uh, personal history and my family's history. And that's, that's incredibly important to me, incredibly important. This is um, about 10 years ago, mm -hmm. and everybody looks so much younger. <laughs> Jolie and I met uh, uh, at a restaurant in uh, San Francisco and just kept talking and talking and just, uh, it was interesting um, because there are, of course, many things that we share, but many uh, experiences, of course, that we didn't. Um, so there's uh, a disparity, but a unity. Finding a long-lost sibling through their DNA connection has been a tangible benefit for Jolie and Neil. The next wave of DNA scientific breakthroughs promises to open doors into new territories once thought impossible. At the forefront of this revolution is a scientist who is unlocking secrets of the human lifespan in the most unlikely of places. Worms. There's a whole network of genes that interact with each other. They control aging. And it was just waiting to be discovered. She's chasing mankind's wildest dream, immortality. DNA, as scientists embark on this next wave of genetic research. Using advances in human and animal genetics, researchers are now attempting one of the most daring discoveries of all time. At the University of California, Dr. Cynthia Kenyon dreams of finding a way to radically prolong our lives, creating a new age of superhumans. From her labs, Dr. Kenyon conducts pioneering work that goes against all the long-held perceptions of a human lifespan. For a really long time, the aging was something that just happened. We just wear out, like an old car. She's searching for the holy grail of genetic science, the real fountain of youth. Dr. Kenyon is looking for inspiration in the natural world, and she notices a key fundamental trait. All species of animals have very different lifespans. Do different species age at different rates? Why does a mouse age and die in two years, and a human in two years? We hardly are started. If Dr. Kenyon is able to identify and manipulate the gene that governs this lifespan, she might just be able to change the way we age forever. She believes that the key to our future lies in this tiny creature known as C. elegans, or the round worm. They are just a millimeter in length, the size of a comma in a sentence. C. elegans ages and dies in just about three weeks. So it's really easy to study them. And also it's very easy to manipulate their genes. Despite their size, these worms have an important bond with humans, and it's all about our shared genetic code. DNA is the universal language of all living things. Worms might be one of the simplest organisms, but they share an amazing 50% of their genes with humans. Dr. Kenyon and her team start to experiment randomly changing different genes within the worms to see if they can increase their lifespans. You take the normal worms, you treat them with a chemical that at a low frequency will change the structure of the DNA. The tests require a lot of patience with little guarantee of success and not everyone is convinced by the investigation. A lot of people didn't think that it would work. Pretty much the whole world thought that aging just happened. And so it was very hard to get anybody to come to the lab to do the experiment. But she isn't your average scientist. 
Fired up by the chance to prove her detractors wrong, Dr. Kenyon and her team start lab tests on worms. You couldn't hold me back because I was really very, very excited about this idea. And I thought there would be something really interesting. There's a whole network of genes that interact with each other. They control aging. And it was just waiting to be discovered. Against all odds, the team makes an astonishing discovery. They identify a key gene called DAP2 that affects aging. By altering this one gene in the worm, they're able to dramatically change the life expectancy of the sea elegans. It took them two days to age as much as a normal worm would age in one day. The life patterns of the normal test worms compared to the DAF2 mutant worms are very different. The untreated group is sluggish and slow, while the mutants are bursting with energy and vitality. Dr. Kenyon and her team continue analyzing the new mutated worms, and what they find next is truly astonishing. Yet another gene that may play a role in aging. It's called DAF-16, and it now multiplies the worm's life by six times. And it was actually almost creepy. You would look at the plates of worms, and the normal worms, they'd be dead. There wouldn't be any worms. And these ones would still be moving and you'd think, gee, they should be dead, but they're, they're not, and they're moving around. This new generation of mutants stay young, extremely active, and develop a superpowered resistance to diseases. It's the breakthrough Dr. Kenyon has been waiting for, and she's now using this knowledge to start the search for similar aging genes in humans. Technology is riding a wave of new genetic applications led by sequencing, which is changing the way we look at ourselves and the world around us. There's still so much more to uncover. Scientists have only just begun to rediscover that parts of our DNA, once deemed junk, or not containing instructions for proteins, may actually hold key clues to how cells, tissues, and organs behave. The frontiers of genetic science could be rewritten. But for now, through genetic mapping, we are opening up a safer world where we can live healthier lives and cure illnesses that were once deadly. DNA sequencing is being used real for, to solve real world problems today. As we map out our future, we are now discovering genes do not govern our fate. The future is DNA.